So Merve Noyan is an accomplished engineer in developer advocacy at Hugging Face. I already um, took one of their stickers up there from my laptop. Thank you very much. It's very cute. And uh, Merve contributes to some really groundbreaking work in this very dynamic field. So Merve's experience has played a pivotal role in recent strides made in computer vision, thanks in part to her contribution to the Hugging Face Transformers Library. And her talk promises to be an enlightening journey through the latest transformer-based vision models. And additionally, she's going to provide some very valuable insights into the practical utilities offered by the Hugging Face Transformers Library, offering a deeper understanding of its underlying philosophy. So I'm just casting a little side eye to my right here and seeing how our amazing tech team are doing. Is it looking hopeful? Are we seeing? Yes, I'm seeing things. I'm seeing things on that screen, and that's a good sign. Okay, fantastic. So, oh, we got our we got the AV legends in. We got bringing out the heavyweights now. Okay, this is all looking very good. Um, look at that nice big hugging face there. I liked very much this uh, this logo. This is wonderful. Um, so just, yeah, a reminder, please be connecting. ABC, always be connecting. I'm taking, I've taken lots of photographs of you all looking absolutely stunningly handsome and gorgeous uh, having lunch. And uh, I'm going to share them on LinkedIn with the hashtag YV23. So if you want to see what they look like, feel free to connect with me and follow the hashtag YV23 and maybe share some of your own thoughts. Uh, about this amazing, wonderful event. And, you know, if any of the speakers say something, they drop a Socrates quote that you're like, what? That's amazing. Or if it really resonates with you and you're thinking this is absolutely brilliant, I would love to share with the wonderful delegates, the many, many hundreds of people joining us live on the YouTube channel. Just share the love and use the hashtag YV23. Okay, my dear friends, I appreciate it's after lunch, which is traditionally siesta time in some areas in Spain, but we are absolutely going to get energized. And I would love for you to join me in giving a huge welcome to Merve Noyan. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if, if you could uh, add me to the stream, I think I can start. Uh, the, the presentation, I mean, yeah, this one. Um, and also my, uh, this, uh, how, how can I add my uh, presentation to the screen? Okay, okay, yeah, this is perfect. Hello, uh, I'm Merve and I have been already introduced. And today I'm going to talk about open source computer vision, uh, thanks to Hugging Face. So before going on that, uh, for those who don't know, I think everyone knows, uh, let me quickly talk about the transfer learning paradigm. So um, essentially, transfer learning is about transferring information from one um, neural network to another. And how you do is uh, when you train, for instance, a con convolutional neural network, um, in the first layers, you have very universal features, for instance, um, the edges, the corner detection and everything. And as you go to the later layers, you have um, features that are very specific to the um, training data. And uh, how you can transfer this information, like when you transfer this information, um, your neural network, and when you later use this information to, uh, for your own specific uh, use case, you will have better accuracy with less data. Your data dependency will dramatically decrease. And thanks to this, um, we are able to um, use uh, many uh, models that are nowadays called backbones. And these are essentially very big neural networks that uh, can be used uh, uh, as a source of information to your own use case. And I'm going to show you how it looks like. So examples of them include many, many like ResNet, Inception, VGG, and more. I mean, the convolutional based ones that are old fashioned. So assume you have uh, you want to predict, you, you want to train on cats. So what you do is you have a cat photo and then you pass it through a backbone and then you get the features out of that backbone that are cat specific. 
or um, it can be very shallow features, for instance, edges or corners or curves. And then uh, you pass these um, features to a um, to an object detection layer, or like if you have um, image classification layer, uh, uh, then you pass it over that and uh, you train that layer essentially. So you use a frozen backbone to extract the features and then you train only the object detection or image classification layer and then you get the output later on. And uh, this is more efficient both data and time efficient compared to the case where you would train an object detector or image classification model from scratch. So uh, what about the transfer, transformer-based transfer learning? Um, it's a bit like a riddle. <laughs> so essentially uh, what is different is that instead of convolution, you have um, transformers. And with this, uh, there comes a couple of um, advantages. Like for instance, with transformers, you can perform something called self-supervised learning, which means um, you, do, you do not need any labeled data to train the backbone, but you have, um, for instance, you, you patch uh, the image, for instance, and then you would like to predict that part, and that's how the model learns on itself without any labels on how to um, capture the features. And uh, it's a sort of a state of the art in most of the computer vision tasks, except for, I would say, generation, generative models where diffusion models are better. And example backbones include vision transformer, data efficient uh, transformer, clip, and uh, swim. Clip is sort of like a multi-model backbone, but we still count it as a computer vision backbone. And uh, I will not mention a lot about diffusion models in this talk, but they are the state of the art in image generation. And um, so your workflow with working with transformer-based models is that you can do fine tuning, like I mentioned. But diffusion models have different ways to adapt them for your own use case. Like there is Dreambooth that was very popular a while ago where you could where people would train um, their own, um, for instance, profile picture generator with only 10 photos, which is very data efficient. Uh, there is control nets, which are trending again with the, you know, I don't know if you've seen it, but there is an application that is going around in the internet these days where people generate illusion images. <laughs> and uh, you have other ways to condition and adapt generations. So problem with guns was that uh, the generations were very hard to control, but with the diffusion models and the adapters based on them uh, actually help you uh, generate uh, more controlled images because you can introduce masks over them or, uh, image, uh, or text inputs over them and it's very nice. And examples include stable diffusion and IF. And the good thing is that uh, big, uh, these models are very powerful, but Hugging Face uh, ecosystem actually helps you uh, control, uh, sorry, um, use these uh, models very easily with many, many abstractions that I will talk about now. And uh, for instance, you can use the transformers library to pre-train transformers or fine tune them. It also includes uh, CNN based models as well, the architectures and everything. If you would like to, for instance, train a um, mobile net from scratch, you can still do that with transformers. And you can use diffusers library to train or adapt the diffusion models. So Hugging Face Hub, as of now, includes over 8,000 models for classical computer vision tasks, um, 10,000 models for 
multimodal cases like image to text, uh, text to image, visual question answering, and more. It also includes over 3,000 data sets for computer vision. Um, I'm giving this information because uh, these mod most of these models are very much ready to use for your own use case, or you can use them to fine tune for your own use case. And the Hugging Face offers both the artifacts to fine tune the data sets and the, and the models. And it also includes the, it also includes the uh, models, data sets, and so forth. So I wanted to give a couple of examples, and I will finish my talk. So this is a deplot model by Google. Uh, it's used for visual question answering from plots, essentially. And it's super easy to use, thanks to transformers. And transformers pretty much has a very coherent and um, consistent um, API, in a way. So what you do is the models are often implemented within transformers. So in this case, because this is a pixel to struct based model, you say from transformers impro import uh, pixel to struct processor, pixel to struct for conditional generation. And you instantiate the pixel to struct processor and the uh, conditional generation model. And you just pass your inputs from processor, uh, have your predictions generated, and then um, post-process your outputs and voila. Like you can just use this model with only um, with only few uh, I'm sorry, a <laughs> few um, lines of code. And same scores for blip. Um, unfortunately, the animation <laughs> doesn't work, but blip is an image captioning model. Um, that is very powerful, and you can use Blip with in the same fashion. You import the processor and the model itself, and you instantiate it, and then you pass your um, text and inputs, and then get the output, and then post-process uh, using decode uh, method of the processor and voila. And if you would like to fine tune, I know this is very small, <laughs> I'm sorry, but let me see. Okay, it works, yay. So uh, what you do is there is trainer API of transformers that is very useful for this case. So uh, what you do is you initialize your feature extractor, which in case is Microsoft Swin Tiny Patch and you instantiate the model, and then um, you have some, so trainer API needs training arguments, like number of, um, like the learning rates, um, gradient accumulation steps, you know, number of epochs and more. So it's like a set of parameters, hyperparameters for your training. And um, you define the, if you want to define a specific loss or compute metrics uh, function, you can do that. And then you initialize the trainer with the model, the training arguments, the feature extractor uh, that we defined previously, uh, training data set, evaluation data set, the metrics function, and the data collator, which essentially um, batches uh, puts together your data. And then you call trainer.train and it fine tunes your model for image classification. It's as easy as that. And your image class image classification fine tooth model becomes ready to use. One last um, API is called pipeline and this is my favorite. So essentially pipeline just is like a box that contains firstly the preprocessor, image preprocessor, and then uh, it takes the output of processor and uh, passes to the model and then um, passes to post-processor. So the process that I have shown before with blip and the plot, for instance, are just abstracted away with the pipeline. And uh, you can just pass dogs and then uh, get the result. Do I have more time, by the way? Okay. <laughs> Uh, it's super easy to use like this. You import uh, pipeline from transformers. 
initialize the pipeline and pass your image and that's it. So you don't have to go through any of the hassle that I have shown you before, even though it's like only eight lines of code. <laughs> A couple of applications and then I will finish my talk. Um, this is, for instance, segment editing demo. And segment editing is essentially a foundational model for image segmentation that does sort of zero shot image segmentation and it's very powerful. And um, you can build this um, demo thanks to uh, Candle, um, Candle library of Hugging Face, but you can also use Transformers if you want to. Candle is just runs inside the browser with WebAssembly. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to show how cool the GIF is because like it shows uh, the UX pretty much with segment editing. And then you can use segment editing. So if you know about control net, you can use segment editing to con condition control net and have even more control over the images. Like for instance, you have a castle image and uh, it segments the image and then passes it as a mask control to stable diffusion. And then uh, you can just generate beautiful images. And another model is Idefix that was developed by Hugging Face. It's a multi-model model like GPT-4, if you use that. And it's like a chatbot. It takes both image and the um, text and chats with you. And this is available in Transformers. Another cool model is Nougat. It's for optical character recognition. And um, you can pass like an, a PDF file and it will transcribe the file. It's very powerful and state of the art. And it's also available in Transformers. Lastly, there is this thing that I mentioned about Illusion Diffusion, and it's essentially cont another control net model. Um, it's very cool. You can just create some optical illusions. And if you would like to learn more, um, you can go to hf.co slash tasks, uh, which contains every single machine learning task and the basic documentation about them. You can also visit Transformers and Diffusers talks. And that's it for my talk. Thank you. Fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. I love all the resources there. I love the fact that you included Grumpy Cat bonus points. That was very <laughs> much fun. Lots of cats and code there. All the good stuff. Now, uh, Merve, are you staying with us for a little yeah, while? Yeah, yeah. You okay, can ask fabulous. me questions. Yeah, so I, what I would suggest is that you find Merve, uh, have a uh, little cafe lito with her over the course of the day or just connect with her on LinkedIn and uh, we'll keep the questions and the conversations going here. But uh, one more time, a big round of applause for Merve. That was so cool. I love it. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Mervé.